Shakespeare's Hamlet. The ghost speaking with Hamlet. But first, Hamlet, whither wilt thou lead me? Speak, I'll go no further. Mark me, I will. My hour is almost come when I to sulfurous and tormenting flames must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost, pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing t to what I shall unfold. Speak, I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast and fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are purged and burnt away, but that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, thy knotted and combined locks to part, and each particular hair to stand on in like quills upon the fretful porcupine. But this eternal blazon is not to be for ears of flesh and blood. List, list, O oh list, if thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge his foul and most unnatural murder. Murder? Murder most foul, as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange, and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love shall sweep to my revenge. I find thee apt, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on Lethe Wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this? Now, Hamlet, hear. Tis given out that, sleeping in my orchard, a serpent stung me. So, the whole ear of Denmark is, by a forged process of my death, rankly abused. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle, I, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, no, oh, wicked wit and gifts that have the power so to seduce one to his shameful lust the will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Oh, Hamlet, what a falling off was there from me, whose love was of that dignity that it went hand in hand, even with the vow I made to her in marriage, but to decline upon a wretch whose natural gifts were poor to those of mine. But virtue, as it never will be moved, though lewdness courted in a shape of heaven, so lust, though to a radiant angel linked, will sate itself in a celestial bed and prey on garbage. But soft, methinks, I sent the morning air. Brief let me be. Sleeping within my orchard, my custom always of the afternoon upon my secure hour thy uncle stole with juice of dread hebanon of isle and in the porches of my ears did pour the leprous distillment whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man that swift as quicksilver it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. 
and with a sudden vigor it doth posit and curd, like eager droppings into milk, the thin and wholesome blood. So did it mine, and a most instant tetter barked about, most lazar-like, with vile and loathsome crust all my smooth body. Thus was I sleeping by a brother's hand of life, of crown, of queen at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin. Unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible, most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsomever thou pursues this act, taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother ought. Leave her to heaven and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her. Fare thee well at once, the glow worm shows the mountain to be near, and gins to pale his uneffectual fire. Adieu, 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 remember me. And then Hamlet speaks. Oh, all you host of heaven! <laughs> oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Oh, fie, hold, hold my heart! And you, my sinews, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee, I, thou poor ghost, whilst memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee, yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial, fond records. All saws of books, all forms, all pressures past, that youth and observation copied there. And thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heavens, O oh, most pernicious woman, O oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain, my table's meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I am sure it may be so in Denmark. So, uncle, there you are. Now to my word. It is. Adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sworn it. Yay! It's a long piece, and I think I got it good. <laughs> Great joy.